I'm going to try to uh, make it through this today. And uh, if, uh, if I don't, somebody else can finish it for me. Um, having trouble here. The uh, passage that was read this morning was from uh, a very familiar psalm, and it was from a uh, kind of a, a what's known as the Song of Accent, Ascents. Um, the children of Israel used this psalm as they were going up to Jerusalem, and uh, we are kind of uh, as we're going through Lent. This is a series that we're calling. Uh, the season of Selah, depending on how you pronounce it. And I've, I've looked it up, it's pronounced different ways. Actually, uh, some people say Selah, uh, Selah, or Selah, or Selah. Uh, so I guess I don't know which one's right. So uh, Selah seems to be close to what uh, uh, I think is closer, but I don't know. Uh, so we'll. We may call it different things, but uh, basically when you see that, and you see it over and over in this passage, and throughout the book of Psalms, it is a musical pause. Uh, they believe it was a lot like a musical rest. Uh, in music, whenever you see the rest, that means there's a break or a pause in between uh, singing. And uh, in this Psalms, uh, when you see that word, it is a, it is really a probably a rest, a, a moment to stop and to take a pause. And so that's appropriate for this time of year as we think about Lent. Lent being a time that we kind of change course a little bit, where we slow down and begin to reflect and to think on our lives. And, uh, and so I think uh, that we could, we could probably take the time to, to just take a break and, and to experience God. Um, but we're also talking about taking a journey in this passage today. And I think it's appropriate because when, uh, when I'm hiking in the woods, uh, I usually, after I get tired for a little while, I'll take a break and sit on a rock or something, maybe sometimes have a, a drink of water or a, a snack, and that's a time or a break in, along the journey. We need those, by the way. Jesus even took those times, uh, a, a moment to reflect in those times. Um, but as we think about the, the mountain, that he's talking about. Uh, it's the idea here is they're going up to Jerusalem, and this was a song that they would often sing as they were making their way up to Jerusalem. And I say up to Jerusalem because Jerusalem, as you know, sat on a plateau, and so no matter where you came from, what direction you were actually going up to Jerusalem. And so as they would sing this uh, pilgrim song, or this song of ascent, as they're making their way up, they would recite this and sing this over and over. Some people, uh, I've heard people say that they do this prayer or this psalm when they're getting ready to go on a journey. Uh, and he talks about how that uh, the Lord will keep you. And that word keep is used several times in this passage. It's from a Hebrew word that really is an interesting word. It really is where we get our word shadow. If we think of shadow, we don't always think of that being a good thing. But in a desert situation, when you're in a desert place, a shadow can be a very good thing. You know, if you, you find a shadow from a, from a tree or something like that, it can be a real blessing. And so he's saying that God is your, your shade. In the toughest times of life, God is your shadow that will give you uh, and sustain you with what you need. And so as we're making our way up this mountain, uh, we're, we're thinking about the very fact that we are in the hands of God. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will not smite you by day, and He will keep you. And uh, as we think about this passage, we understand that, you know, some people will say, well, this is... 
this is a promise that God's going to protect you, and it is, uh, but it doesn't guarantee us from any troubles or trials or any problems. We know that from experience that's not the case, that we do have troubles. But it does promise us that we're in God's hands. Our lives are in God's hands. I know today we're hearing a lot about uh, the coronavirus and all that's going on and people are, are, are scared and, 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 <clears throat> and I'm not saying that we shouldn't take precautions and all that and, and you know we, we know that uh, it, it's something that we are doing and we should do but at the same time I almost feel like that we're living in an age of fear where uh, fear is being something that's pushed on people and uh, so many people are fearful today and in a way that they never were. Uh, last night I watched a movie. It's an old movie, uh, the Orson Welles movie, War of the Worlds. Y'all remember that? Uh, and it was uh, about when the aliens invaded uh, Earth. And they, they were in basically almost unstoppable. And all of, our, uh, all of our weapons that were used against them did no good. And so finally, toward the end, it looked like the end of the world. And do you know where they found everyone ended up going to? They were in church. And all, all kinds of people found their way to sanctuaries. And they were singing. And they were praying. And that's where they planned to spend, if need be, their last days. And I think that's appropriate to think about the fact that no matter what happens in this life, we are in God's hands. Uh, you know, I know that uh, there's all kinds of... Uh, all kinds of fears that we could, we could spend our lives worrying about. But nothing can happen to us that is not out of God's will. In other words, God has a whole world in His hands, we used to sing. And that doesn't mean nothing bad can happen, but as long as God has a plan for your life and God, uh, you know, you think about the nation of Israel and He made promises to them that were fulfilled and that they would continue to be a nation. And no other nation was, has seen so much people come against them and try to annihilate them as the nation of Israel. And yet they're still a people today. And I believe that God is saying the same thing to us, to you and I. There's something about knowing that as I go through life, no matter what happens, that God is in my life and God is with me, that makes it more precious to me. And there's just something about that. I found that first time I remember feeling that uh, or experiencing that was when I was about 17 years old and I'd just given my life to the Lord and my little sister passed away with cancer. And it's hard to explain unless you've been through it, and you know what I'm talking about. But there was just this overwhelming presence during that time. This sense that I never had before, something that I felt stronger than I'd ever felt before. And it was almost as if God was sitting right beside of me. And He carried me through that time. And I've seen other times where God has helped me through. And uh, I remember... That sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes we, we are kind of disappointed with the way things turn out. And uh, I remember the time that I was in West Virginia and I received a phone call that my father had been killed in a car accident. And I didn't, uh, I, I'll just tell you, my world turned upside down at that, that point. Dad had uh, recently given his life to the Lord and was we were uh, repairing our relationship and when this happened I, I just felt cheated and I guess I thought back then as a young man that my vision of God my picture of God is that if I did all the right things that good things would happen and this sort of shattered that that idea for me and it wasn't that I no longer believed in God it's just I no longer believed in that God that I had formed in my mind. I began to understand that, yeah, bad things do happen sometimes to good people. But, but, here's the thing. God has promised He'd never leave us and He'd never forsake us. On the other hand, I have seen those times where I have seen God carry me through. Where I have seen His hands so strong and felt His presence so real that I don't think I could take another step without Him. I've seen those times where God has done miracles. I've seen God do wonderful things, even in the hospital, and, and you know, uh, pray for somebody. And, and I realize that 
And even sometimes the doctors realize that it's out of our hands. There's some things that are out of our hands. And this is a, an assurance to us that no matter where we go, God is going to be with us. He's going to carry us through, and He's going to see us through in those tough times. I like that song, uh, In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. And I can't think of anything better today than to offer you and to tell you that you can, as you go through life's journey, is to have Jesus. You know, we, we go a lot of, a lot of miles, uh, whether it be in a car or walking or whatever, and we carry, cover a lot of territory. And you think about the children of Israel and the, and the pilgrimages they made, and they needed to know that God was on their side, that God was with them. God is going to carry you through no matter what, as long as we trust in Him, that we continue to understand that God is in our life.